All right, hey everyone, Mr. Shea here in my empty void of a classroom. It's so empty and sad. However, it is nice to talk to you on the old YouTube. This week, my students, we are looking at the stock market. I'm gonna shrink myself down. The stock market is not the economy. And this year has been the perfect example of that. I'll show you a graph here. So up here, this is the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is a collection of the 500 biggest companies. Maybe not all of them, but 500 very large companies that are very profitable. Together, all of the companies in, those, in the S&P 500 are worth a combined $30 trillion. So in March, when really the economy shut down because of the pandemic, the stock market itself crashed. So people were very worried about businesses that were in there, whether they would make a lot of money. But since then, it has gone up a lot. So we're almost back at the point where we were before March, which seems awesome. Is the economy doing great? Well, not really. If you look down here, these are some other indicators for the economy. So uh, like industrial production. So we're looking at what is being produced by factories in the United States. It has not recovered a whole lot. It went down a whole heck of a lot though. Uh, employment. We have a huge number of people that are unemployed right now. That has recovered slightly, but not a whole lot. Retail and food sales, it's recovered slightly. And in fact, it kind of looks like the stock market. But other things like the price of oil, the confidence of you as a consumer, someone that buys things, that is still really down. So I think a lot of people get confused when they hear the stock market's doing so well, but why does everyone keep talking about the economy doing, doing poorly? So I think the first thing I wanted to say here, and not I think I know, the stock market is not the economy. Sometimes they look like each other, but many times they don't. What are stocks? So if you buy a stock in a company, you become a shareholder. The purpose of buying a stock then is to make some money. That happens in two different ways. Number one, if the price of the stock that you buy increases, then you make money. And if it decreases, you lose money. There's also dividends. So if a company posts a profit, let's say Amazon profited a billion dollars this year, they're going to divide up some of those profits and give them back to their shareholders. Why would you want to invest in the first place? So we want to grow your money. So if you were to invest in the stock market today with $10,000, and you might be like, I don't have $10,000, but hey, maybe in 10 years you have $10,000. That money is going to increase in value exponentially. So if you were to invest, sorry, this should be $10,000. If you were to invest $10,000 today, in 30 years, that investment is going to be worth $1 million. So that's a lot. That's the purpose of investing, is you want your money to grow. Cash loses value. And that seems strange, but it does. So if you were to look at the value of money, let's say you had $300 and you put it underneath your pillow and you let that money sit there for years and years and years. Then in 30 years from now, you're like, heck yeah, I got I got $300 under my pillow still. Your neck's a little stiff and you take it out. The value, what you can do with that money is now almost zero. And I'll show you a chart. So what happens is inflation. The prices of goods are going to go up. So while today $300 might seem like a lot of money, in 30 years from now, $300 is not going to be a lot of money. It cost $100 in 1990. Today it would cost $200. So you had that money sitting around. You're going to buy that thing for $100. 30 years later, you, don't, you barely have half of that money. So cash loses value. It is not good to just store it away and hide it. What is some advice for you to invest? And in this class, we're going to be investing a fake $100,000. So from one person here, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is one of the richest human beings that has ever lived and certainly one of the richest human beings on planet Earth today. 
If you look at this little graph, at the age of 14, he had $5,000. By the age of 34, he had $3.4 million. By the age of 56, he was worth $1.4 billion. And today he's worth $80 billion. So if you're like, I really want to be a billionaire, it takes time. But if you are going to be persistent and you are going to really focus on investing, Warren Buffett's an example of someone that really went from not having a lot of money at all to being now one of the richest humans that has ever lived. So a couple of pieces of adv advice from him that I will share with you. Never invest in a business you cannot understand. So for next week, students of mine, you want to invest in companies that you know something about. And... What are the companies that you know something about? You might say, I don't know anything about a company. Well, what's in your pocket right now? Or what are you watching this video on? What company made this? So for me, this computer that I'm recording this video on was made by Hewlett Packard. So let's search HP stock. Hewlett Packard is a company, a uh, tech company. So if I were to look at them, $19, I could buy one share of Hewlett Packard right now. You want to invest in things that you know about because you are able to understand it. Now, if I were to say, uh, I want you to invest in oil companies, you might not know a whole lot about oil companies. You might understand it because you buy gas for a car. All right, that might be something that's a little more manageable. Now you can understand why people would need oil. But if it's something even more diverse, something that's really something that you don't know about, avoid it. You really only want to invest in things that you can understand. Second piece of advice. It's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. You're going to see companies that have very low prices. And you might say, ooh, if it's low, I can make a lot of money. I'm going to invest in it. But if it's a bad company, it's probably low for a reason. So I'm giving you, for this game, $100,000 of fake money. So invest in companies that you trust are going to do well. Don't gamble it on things that look like a deal, but in fact, they're just cheap and bad in general. If you aren't thinking about owning a stock for 10 years, don't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. The goal when you're investing is that you actually want to hold on to it, that you believe in this company. That's why you want to invest in them, because you, you truly believe that they are going to keep getting better. And if you don't think they're going to keep getting better, then you, you don't invest in them. Diversification can be dangerous. So if you were to invest in 500 companies, there's no way you can focus on all of those. So for this class, for my students, and really for life, the kind of sweet spot is between 20 and 60 stocks because there's enough diversification that if one company totally fails, you haven't lost all of your money because you've spread it out, but you don't have it spread out so far that it's hard to manage. So even professionals that do this for a job, they generally don't invest in a ton of companies. They keep it pretty specific so that they can follow them much more easily. And that last point is follow the news. But don't overreact. You're going to see companies in the news. You're going to see Apple say, hey, we're releasing a new iPhone. All right, cool. That doesn't mean just because the iPhone looks a little weird that you should sell your Apple stocks. Hold on to them. However, if there is news that a company, maybe they are being investigated by the government for fraud, something like that, that in general probably might not be a great piece of news, especially if you start seeing that repeated and repeated. So one piece of news, don't just suddenly sell everything. But as you see some trends, maybe you're going to start having a sense that maybe things aren't going as well as they could, or the company's killing it, and maybe you should buy some more stocks in there. So... We're going to be playing this game, students of mine, the stock market game. This is put out by the St. Louis Federal Reserve, and the purpose of this is to introduce investing to students, which is why we're playing it. There's some rules, though, that you must follow, which are as follows. $100,000 in cash you're given. That's it. You can borrow money later on, but we're not going to get into that for our class. You can only trade stocks and mutual funds, and we'll get into mutual funds not this week, listed on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange and the New York Stock Exchange. So you can't just buy anything. They have to be listed on. 
So if it's a, a very small uh, kind of obscure stock, it might not be listed. So you might not be able to find it. Same thing with foreign companies. You might not be able to find all the foreign companies that you might desire. Extremely volatile stocks or stocks that trade infrequently are not permitted. So these are what's known as penny stocks. So if it, a company might cost uh, eight cents a share to buy it. And why that's appealing to people is if you buy a hundred shares of that, that's not going to cost you a lot of money because it was only eight cents each. So you just spent eight dollars and you get a hundred shares. If it just goes up a penny, you've made money. You've made a hundred stocks by a penny is you just made a dollar by going up one penny. So it's appealing to buy penny stocks because the value can fluctuate so much. But the problem is it can go up and down so much that you could very quickly lose all your money too. So you can't buy anything that's less than $3 a share. Uh, you must buy at least 10 shares minimum for the company. So if you find, for instance, Hewlett Packard, you can't buy just one share of it. You have to buy at least 10. And remember, you have $100,000, so you have a lot of money to spend here. And there's a $5 commission. So the Securities and Exchanges Commission is a branch of the U.S. government that oversees trading, particularly because we've had examples like the Great Depression, where there was a lot of problems with trading, a lot of practices that are now illegal, and they oversee this to ensure that this not happen again. It is a part of the government that is self-funded. So every trade that you would make on in the stock market in real life, you have to pay a fee. And all of those fees allow the government to regulate it without taking taxpayer money. So it's actually one of the few self-funded organizations in the United States government. All right, I've been talking a lot. So how is this going to look? So I'm going to get into all of your group Google Drive folders, some login information for the stock market game. So once you're in here, you will see a few things. You'll see your team and your advisor. That's me. You'll see how much money you have. I have $100,000 and 41 It's because I've gained interest on my cash. I haven't invested in it yet because this game does not start until the 12th. So I actually can't invest yet. However, if you were to find, uh, you want to make a trade. So this is what you'll be using a lot. Number one, up here is the portfolio. So if you were to click on your account holdings, you'll see all of the stocks that you have invested in, as well as the cash you have on hand. I haven't invested in any stocks, so I just have $100,000 in cash. However, I do want to make a trade. So in here, I'm going to make a stock trade. We'll talk about these two later on, mutual funds and bonds. But to buy a stock trade, up here, I'm going to click on buy because I want to buy some stocks. And then I need to find the ticker symbol. So we'll go back to Hewlett Packard. Actually, let's do something else. I think I want to invest in Amazon. I'm just going to search in Google Amazon stock. It costs $3,194 for one share of Amazon. And just a couple things for you to kind of understand how to read this. Number one, we have Amazon, that's the company, but they do have a ticker symbol. So for the symbol for Amazon is AMZN, and they're mostly these short abbreviations. So I would go back to my stock market game. I'm going to paste in that, Amazon, and just to make sure it works, just click on validate ticker, and then Amazon comes up right there. So you'll put in this short symbol, and then you'll say, I want to put a market price in. I want, you have to have a minimum 10 shares. You might say, I want 100 shares of Amazon, which 100 times 3,000 is going to be $30,000 you're going to be spending, which you have 100,000, so why not? Limit price. Don't worry about the limit price. Now, I would hit preview game, but the game has not started, so I'm not going to. But that's going to be how you buy a stock on the stock market game. Similarly, similarly, if you want to sell, sell some stocks, let's say you invested in Party City. You're like, Party City is not doing well. We need to get out of here and not lose all of our money. So then you would just click on sell. You would put in the ticker symbol and then decide how many shares you want to sell. And then preview trade. 
So this is going to be the interface that you students will be working on throughout the next couple months. You'll see some other things in there, like rankings. You are competing against students from all around the state, as well as teachers. I will be competing in this. Uh, but you really do want to uh, keep checking in on this as a group, seeing how you're doing, and ideally make a bunch of money. That's kind of it for this video, investing basics, how we're going to use the stock market game, and we will catch all of you students in class next week. Until then, enjoy the weekend.